Today, I will be talking about mastering the XR uh, and why on earth do we need uh, uh, haptics and basic immersiveness and how that does that translate onto our real lives. Um, extended reality is uh, a combination of different technologies that we've been using for the last uh, probably decade or so, uh, some technologies even more. Uh, and it's a combination of uh, augmented, extended, uh, mixed reality and, and uh, virtual reality. So the technology uh, has luckily advanced so uh, far enough that it has uh, gone into other aspects of our lives uh, beyond the entertainment part and pure science. Uh, VR itself probably takes uh, its roots from 1800s, like 1830 something, uh, but first headsets that have been, uh, have been used for uh, NASA research have surfaced in, at the end of 70s. And luckily, uh, we now have better uh, processing power, more processing power, be better screens, and we can take the whole uh, range of uh, devices and actually assist our lives. And one of the aspects is virtual learning and immersive learning. So I want to talk about uh, the cone of experience. And what is, is very important in this, uh, on this slide is that the passive learning that we used to use, uh, used to adopt uh, studying at schools, studying at universities, is uh, reading books, looking at pictures and drawings. Uh, at best, we would be able to watch the explanatory videos. And the data retention uh, in the passive learning mode is very low. So comparatively, from reading the books uh, at 10%, all the way to participating in demonstrations and uh, exhibitions, it goes up to 50%. Uh, also. Uh, um, we get an, uh, an evolution of how we would use that data. So having read the book, we, we can only retell the story. Uh, we do not master uh, the information itself. We cannot devise uh, or um, consult somebody on that. We need more experience. Now, having participated at, a, at an exhibition or having gone through a demonstration, we can take a more complex device and explain another person how it works, how we can use it, and how we shouldn't be using it. But if we move into active learning, and this is what XR is bringing uh, to this world nowadays, uh, we can actually uh, have a full hands-on experience learning about uh, more compl complex environments. Uh, we can learn about um, situations which otherwise are very difficult to, to be introduced. Uh, and I'll talk about it later. So. Uh, with that data, however, we will be able to analyze information. We can retell them. We can become uh, the uh, information generator, in, this, in essence, because we now possess the entire ability to explain what the device is, or the product, or the service, and so on and so forth. So that's a huge step. So the benefits of the immersive uh, learning can be split into six major uh, parts. So we can mirror the real life uh, situations. We can uh, bring the scene to us, so end of distance, meaning that we can travel through distance in time to place the, uh, the person who's learning into that environment at that specific point of time uh, within that setting that is otherwise would be either too expensive or too bulky or plainly uh, impossible to, to simulate. So uh, reduced operational costs are then coming out of that. So because we don't have to travel as much, we can bring that environment. We can send that environment to other people. We can have a whole stream of people going through it uh, with, with uh, a much cheaper way of regenerating it. Uh, we can add the aspect of uh, actual experiential learning. So we can create uh, scenarios where, can, where people can fail. We can. Uh, allow people within the failure to go through situation and, and explain what have they done wrong, what they have noticed, and they would, through explanation, through living that, uh, that experience of a mistake, better understand how not to make that mistake. So that's important. Um, the engagement itself goes up uh, purely you know, from the novelty of the XR itself. So we've seen uh, that uh, introducing augmented reality or virtual reality brings that uh, even the most boring demo becomes somewhat more interesting because it's just a new thing. But also, because the screen is always in front of us, uh, it's, it makes it harder to space away. And you're almost, you're almost entirely kind of 
in front of what you're supposed to experience. So uh, with the addition of haptics, uh, the scene itself is making the person more aware. So uh, in, this, in this instance, the uh, engagement goes up. But what's important, especially moving towards the industry 4.0, is collecting as much data as possible. The industry itself is supposed to be data driven. And the biggest challenge is the more data we receive, the more difficult it becomes to actually learn new stuff because there's way too much data that we can process. The brain is still the same. The approach is different. We digitalize everything. Uh, there's, there's many more devices to learn to, to, to be used so you'd be relevant at work. Uh, there are many more things uh, that are expected from an employee. Previously, reporting was somewhat simpler, much simpler. Nowadays, we want to see the dimensions, we want to see the productivity, and so on and so forth. We want to analyze that. And so that brings me to uh, the technology that actually makes it uh, all possible so we can actually record as much data about the employee, about the environment itself, and uh, uh, so, and then reuse it, uh, and in the form of uh, a very known case, uh, well-known cases like Airbus, for example, employing AR in uh, in its seat assembly, achieved 500% growth uh, on productivity. Uh, Boeing, for example, uh, increased. Uh, productivity by 35% on wing assembly. And the first task completion went up to like nine, almost 95%. So uh, we can see that employing assisted reality or augmented reality in this instance, for example, is bringing uh, higher safety levels and a higher completion rate with uh, better productivity. So people don't, uh, uh, don't get distracted uh, as much by looking through manuals and so on and so forth. And the verification is actually happening in real time. Um, so the breakthrough technology that allows us to assist in collecting the data, both mechanical, biometrical, and situational, is uh, the Tesla suit, which is acting as a two-way interface between the human body and the computer world. Uh, this is important uh, because when, when uh, the user is uh, going through the journey of a normal data routine, uh, we want to understand better whether we should actually pay attention to how much rest the employee get, gets, for example. Maybe the peak of performance is not uh, in the morning, but rather in the afternoon. So this would allow us to create not only uh, a very uh, specific learning environments, which are individualized, but also specific working environment, which would be more suitable to every person. And so I'll play a little video now uh, to uh, add a little perspective on what Tesla Suit could do. Tesla Suit is a human to digital interface, the only of its kind, designed to simulate experience and accelerate mastery in the physical world. Tesla Suit inputs haptic feedback to any area of the body, from gentle touch to feelings of physical exertion and temperature, and outputs motion capture and biometrics. Tesla Suit accelerates VR training with performance monitoring and sensation. Users experience scenarios as though they've lived them. In the physical world, errors in operating procedure can be costly. Trainers are a limited resource and mastery requires endless input and repetition. With Tesla Suit, trainer inputs are embedded in the simulation. Users train with autonomy and mastery is achieved with less repetition by programming operating procedure into muscle memory. In high stakes industries, where errors can cost millions of dollars or human lives, Tesla Suit reduces risk by training safety protocol into reflex. Training requires less time and human resources, and users perform reliably, like masters, on day one. On heavy industrial sites, on-the-job injuries are reduced by perfecting technique. Public safety professionals develop the instincts they'll need in the heat of the moment. Tesla Suit captures the movement of individuals and teams, enabling experts to analyze performance, both in training and in the field. In any field, 
the Tesla Suit Developer Toolkit supports rapid development of accelerated training solutions, and mastery can now be scaled infinitely. Tesla Suit, master reality. <laughs> Thanks. Well, around three and a half years ago, we started developing the Tesla Suit, uh, and back in the day, on a hype of VR, nobody knew where the VR will go. Uh, and obviously, everybody thought that entertainment is going to be the, the thing that is going to win uh, the end customer. So we started uh, the Tesla suit as a haptic suit that could uh, actually transmit the sensations onto the body. However, um, uh, being, uh, having analyzed the market and having seen that uh, the, the uh, use cases are not growing and that they're not becoming a golden ticket, uh, we foresaw the the change, the pivot into enterprise training uh, a couple of years ago, and we started developing further systems. So nowadays it includes uh, the haptic system. We have uh, motion capture that tracks the entire body. We have uh, Tenzin EMS, and this is used more in uh, research cases, and I'll, I'll show it later. And biometrical feedback that records it also. We can, uh, we can record the stress levels, the focus, and so on and so forth. Uh, so certain parameters that are important uh, to, to make use of the data, the mechanical data, the mechanical motion, uh, the lack of motion, for example, we could provide a proof of life at a workplace or we could provide uh, an engagement rate, uh, for example, within the training itself, allowing to, uh, for the HR department, for example, to analyze whether the training is actually adequate, the training is interesting, or whether the person is actually progressing or not. So, uh, some of the examples that we do uh, is a combination of our systems, and I'll show you. So, combination of haptic motion capture and biometrics can translate uh, through immersive simulations uh, into industries in public safety for training, for example, the enterprise training, athletics, rehabilitation, which is uh, uh, purely research at the moment, and uh, space industry. Um, talking about combining EMS and TENS uh, could assist in reflex training, that can be used in sports, that could be uh, used in, again, in public safety and so on and so forth. Uh, generally, uh, motion caption biometrics can allow us to study the behavior itself within the VR or simulated environments. Uh, talking about combining EMS, uh, motion caption biometrics, can assist in physical training as well. So looking at pro athletes at the moment, and then uh, we will be able to move the pro athletic style training to uh, a middle, middle level of uh, uh, athletes and, and uh, moving it down the pipeline to, to the novices. Um, we had already uh, built a number of use cases uh, with various companies. Um, some of them included uh, safety training and this is where the technology is most applicable to, where the uh, cost of error is uh, very high, where the injury rate is very high. We provide uh, the feedback from the world itself so people are becoming more aware Self, uh, more self-controlled within environments that they are, are entering and also uh, remembering the actual environment and being able to walk it through even if the lights are out. Um, one of the use cases was with Schlumberger. Uh, we're on the oil and oil extraction, uh, extraction rig where the um, scenario that we played and tested was on, on the rig uh, gaining very high pressure and the, the uh, trainee is tasked to shut down the entire rig by himself uh, within a very short period of time. Otherwise, he would meet uh, the consequences, but the complications were added and some of the systems that we used, the complications included uh, basically the nuts and bolts starting to pop off and hot oil or high pressure oil dripping onto the person. That brings the level of stress up and the person is just becoming disorientated uh, at the first attempt. And uh, the fail rate was very high. After going through a few of uh, approaches, uh, people were able to complete the task, and especially uh, since the, the valves themselves, there was a specific sequence, but the valves are not in a straight line, so remembering that sequence under stress is very difficult. Um, another use case is training. The DTEC is the biggest uh, energy supplier of Ukraine, and uh, the case included the training for uh, the power plant and maintenance of the high power equipment. Again, very dangerous environment. If somebody forgot to 
earth the uh, certain specific parts and uh, there are uh, specific uh, um, devices that they need to bring with them and in certain specific places. Uh, that's, that's another stressful job because the downtime of the power plant is very short. So the time pressure is high and the stress level usually goes up. So we, we, we are right now going through the full study of uh, actually getting the numbers. So we, we could, for example, uh, next year we could actually present how much uh, uh, the performance increases uh, from the use of haptics uh, and our Tesla suit with uh, virtual reality learning uh, platform. Uh, some cases include uh, pure research, so we, we're working with NASA Advanced Human Performance Labs where we're uh, studying the uh, improvements that we can bring to pre-flight, in-flight and post-flight uh, uh, training. And this is uh, uh, where we have all the systems enabled and uh, we're going through that ongoing research with Stanford, Stanford Labs at the moment and it's going to take another three years for us to be able to publish the uh, findings. And just recently, we've completed the zero-G flight, where we've seen, uh, we took the virtual reality environment uh, and Tesla suit, and we've flown uh, two, uh, two trainees into a zero-G environment. So they were on the plane that was simulating uh, zero gravity. And we were studying uh, the effects and uh, how the person responds to uh, on-Earth sensation simulation in VR in zero gravity. So we found that it's actually quite uh, pleasurable, uh, the simulations that we've run, and it's less pleasurable on the takeoff. So uh, wherever the G-force is exceeded 2G and more, it's, uh, the sensitivity of the body goes up, and so it's very difficult to uh, process that for our own body. We're still uh, uh, continuing the research, and with the hope to place the Tesla suit to, to, uh, onto the ISS, that's, that's going to be the first step, and hopefully we'll be the first ones uh, flying to Mars uh, as a device, helping out the, with uh, muscle atrophy issue, with uh, the social aspect of things, so we would be able to simulate the on-Earth uh, communication uh, in space in VR and helping the astronauts on the long-haul flights to actually cope with the lack of or sensory deprivation that sends the brain into an overshock. Uh, we also work with government services, so some of the uh, simulations that we've run and are very successful are uh, actually training the VIP uh, security, the army, the police, and so on and so forth. Um, we're participating in, number, in a number of programs that, where we're studying the effects and improvement uh, level. Um, a very interesting uh, simulation that we have is on parachute jumping uh, for, uh, for the uh, spec ops is another uh, aspect where the stress levels are very high, especially for novices, and this is where the technique is very important, uh, the precision of it, and execution, so uh, adding uh, some value there as well, so going through that uh, study before we can publish it as well. Um, so I hope you, you kind of gained some more knowledge about what Tesla suit does and means, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, fire them up.